Hey guys, it's Cam here. Welcome back to the Build Room. In this week's episode, we are back working on Violet Crumbles, our 1976 Toyota Celica, and we have some new tools which we're gonna use to try and fix the accident damage on that left-hand rear quarter. So stick around and check it out. All right, so new tool day in the build room, which is always an exciting one. And today we've got the Fever for the Viva. And this is a Viva F12000S. Uh, it's just a generic eBay, Amazon kind of a thing, uh, but it is a spot welding dent puller. And for those of you that have used a normal uh, old school dent puller, basically what you do is you drill a hole in a panel, you put a screw into that panel and then you attach a slide hammer to the back of it. The slide hammer basically looks like this and you would, you would have a screw in the panel, it attaches to the back of it and then you can slide the hammer back and that percussive force will pull the dent out of the car. Now, someone has actually done that to the back of Violet Crumbles. You can see there's a couple of holes drilled here and it indicates probably the first and the biggest shortcoming of the old school dent pullers. And that is that you do have to basically Swiss cheese the panel as you repair it. And then you've got to weld those holes up and then you put heat into the panel and you distort it. And then really you should pull it again. And like it kind of goes around and around in circles. So they're not a really great way to operate or I have not found them to be a great way to operate. I'm sure there's plenty of really old school panel guys that know how to work those things really well and do a fantastic job of the repairs that they do, but I'm not that guy. So I've decided a lack of skill set. We throw a little bit of money at some uh, tools and hopefully we can balance things out a little bit or at least start to pull it back in my direction. So the concept behind a spot welding dent puller is that you have a very similar setup. You have a slide hammer um, and it attaches to a basically a welder for the I guess for the uh, easy explanation, and you put your slide hammer into your welding gun, and then on the tip of the gun, you have this little thing here, which is a copper electrode with three sides, uh, and what that is gonna do is that's gonna weld itself to the panel. So you can basically spot weld this quickly to the panel. You put in a very small amount of heat when you're doing these sorts of spot welds. Uh, it's not like trying to weld up one of the holes that you would drill for a traditional one. Uh, and then you can use the slide hammer section. And then when you feel like you've pulled the dent enough, you can just twist this from side to side and it will snap off. It will just fatigue off. And then you can use the tip again. And you can use these over and over and over again. Now, I've used one of these before for a very short period of time, uh, doing some fender work on my old 135. That fender work did not work out well, but it was not the fault of this tool. But in using it on that car, what I did find, uh, the massive benefit to these is your ability to be a lot finer in the number of areas that you would spot in. So on a normal dent where you might have a dent that's say six inches wide, you might drill holes and pull that in four or five different spots. And if it's, maybe it was grazed or it's some sort of complex repair, it can get are quite difficult to pull those flat because the more you drill, the more holes you put in it, the more you weaken the structure, and the more time and effort it takes to switch between drilling and putting in your uh, screws and then attaching your slide hammer to the screws and so on and so forth. But with this, all you do is simply just tack it on the car and you can pull, and then you can move half a centimetre over and you can do it more. You don't necessarily have to start right in the middle of the dent and try to pull it all the way out. You can run a straight line through a longer dent or a scrape. There's just a lot more freedom, I guess, and ease at which you can implement the work that you wanna do. Uh, and this thing, I think, was 400 bucks from Amazon uh, delivered to my door. And, you know, it looks like a pretty beefy unit, even though it is very basic. but. For this kind of work, I kind of like basic. I don't want to overcomplicate things. Like I said, I'm not a pro. I don't want to spend six months trying to get familiar with a piece of equipment. I just want it to do a job and move on. So let's have a look. So this is the unit itself. Uh, it's got a full control panel here. And when I say full, I mean you have adjustment levels here, and then you've got a switching for you, but switch between time and power. And then you've got these six buttons, which 
are not actually buttons. There's no, there's no modes here. And I think this is just a flat panel, but they certainly look like buttons, don't they? Uh, so all this is doing is giving you an indication of what you want to do. So if you're doing a straight pull, uh, let me get that focused in there. You might have 0.1 to 0.2 of a second at 90 to 100% power. Um, if you're spot welding, there's some settings there. Uh, and if you are closing the fire level, which I'm pretty sure is spot shrinking, uh, which is one of the other cool things that you can do with these machines. And that is to just use a, uh, a solid head on the tip and put a bunch of heat into the panel and then let it cool down so that the metal will shrink. And that's why when you weld, say you weld a straight line down like that between two panels, it'll shrink all the way down that weld and you'll see really good welders come back and hammer and dolly those welds. And that is to flatten them out. But what they're doing with that is they're stretching the metal along where they've welded. So they're getting it back to zero, I guess. So yeah, you can do some uh, spot shrinking with that. There's a wave line setting. Uh, and then there's single spot welding as well, um, just basically welding two panels together. I don't think that this would be particularly good at that uh, because I believe with spot welding, you should be uh, heating it from both sides, pinching it together as you go. So uh, yeah, I can't imagine this is gonna do well at that, but it's obviously something they offer. So yeah, it's pretty basic. You can just change the uh, time here. And then if we go to power, we can crank up the, well, crank up the power. Very, very basic indeed. So yeah, let's take a look at the uh, panel and see where we are with Violet Crumbles and what we're gonna focus on today. All right, and here we have the quarter panel, uh, looking pretty average indeed. It has been a spell, we've got a little bit of surface rust, but it's pretty okay. Um, this hasn't been coated with anything either. Uh, normally I would just rub it with some rust converter, but I didn't bother with that, so yeah, this is, this. we've got it wet in a couple of places and it's rusted, but other than that's pretty good. Um, you can see here in this dent, and this is the, probably the one we'll do as a bit of a demo, uh, we've got some holes where it's been dent pulled previously with probably the more traditional uh, dent puller. And then through here, we've got some areas that have other dents. Now, this one here, I might be able to get into with a hammer and dolly from the boot. So that is a dent all the way through. So anywhere there's black here, there's a depression, right? I've sanded, I sprayed the whole thing black and then we sanded it all back. So anywhere you see black, that means you've got a low point. Uh, this is probably the biggest one. And all this and all this area through here is a really good example of what I will need the spot welding dent puller for because this obviously has behind it a piece of metal. So you can't really do a lot to get in here and bash it out from the back. Here, hopefully we're getting from the boot. Here, I could pull the window out and things like that, but I don't really want to do that. There's a big mechanism in here and I don't want to mess around. So I will probably just dent pull this and hopefully not need the hammer and dolly. If I do, okay, I'll suck it up and try and get my hand in there. But the, the least amount of work here is possible. And then in here, we would just not be able to get to the back. So the only way to do this is to pull it out from the front um, or the only feasible way that I know of. Uh, and so, yeah, so hopefully the dent puller is gonna come in real handy. This depression here, this indent is probably about, I would say a good centimeter. This is really aggressive. Uh, so as we pull it out, it's probably, that metal will have stretched significantly and it's probably gonna to lead to some buckling and things like that. So obviously we've had a repair here before, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm in for here. It may be that when I try and pull this, it gets really difficult really quickly. Um, and this is the first time that I've done a repair on this kind of stuff. So we are gonna be learning at the same time, but I think it's worth giving a crack. And uh, yeah, you don't know until you try. So let's give it a go. Now I've got the spot welder set up already and I've put my ground down here. So I'll just throw the camera on a tripod and then I'll show you guys what we're looking to do. Okay, so I've got this set up on what it says to use for a straight pull, which is 0.2 of a second and 99% power. And then all we need to do is just touch it onto the body uh, and pull the trigger and that will weld itself there. Like I said, it doesn't stick on for long, but if I pull that now, I think you should be able to see that on camera, but I can give that a good tug and wob wobble the car and I can certainly pull. I don't want to hit too hard because I'm not actually in a dent here, so I'm not looking to pull the panel out, but I'm stuck to the car here and that's oh, not coming off. There's quite a lot of resistance there. But in order to get this off now, all I need to do is just wiggle it from side to side and it'll pop off and it'll just 
leave a small sort of freckle there. You can see I've done a few test pulls through here. Um, it'll just leave a small indent there. Now that is something that you could basically just sand off. You don't even need the grinder on that. Certainly a lot better than having these left in. And if you can imagine with something like this, I can tack here, 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 all the way along, pull really slowly and really smoothly. Whereas with this, this is about as close as you want them. You start drilling a hole here and pulling as well, and you're gonna, you know, it's gonna become Swiss cheese pretty quick and it's gonna be really hard to fix. So I'm gonna start with this. Now, obviously, in order to get a current to pass through here, I need to remove this paint. So I'm just gonna quickly grind this paint off and, uh, and then we'll start pulling this area. I'll get the camera in nice and close so you can see what I'm doing and hopefully see the panel lifting out. And yeah, we'll see how we go. Like I said, first time I've ever tried this when I'm trying to repair something. Uh, the previous one that I used it for, I was literally trying to pull an arch out as far as possible. Um, we had some wide offset wheels that wouldn't fit and uh, we had rolled and cut the guards as much as we could. Um, in this one, it's gonna be a whole different story because I'm not just trying to pull as much as I can, I'm really just trying to finesse this into a reasonable state so that uh, I use the smallest amount of body filler and well, hopefully none, but I don't think I'll get it that good. I'm sure others could, but I'm just still learning. So yeah, camera on a tripod again and we'll uh, see what we can do here. All right, so, um, so far, what we've done here is pulled this one quite high, and that would probably need to be tapped down, but it is slowly moving this out. This is much less pronounced than it used to be. So I can see what I'm gonna do here is probably just put a whole bunch, just pull it in little bits, because I don't wanna pull one section out too far. This probably pulled too far. Um, it's, it has left kind of a pimple on the surface. Uh, so if I'm just a little bit more careful and maybe start from the out in rather than starting closer to the middle, hopefully we'll be able to pull these out a little bit neater and uh, get it close to the point where it doesn't take too much work to get it smooth. So yeah, I'm gonna keep cracking on with this and we'll see how we go. All right, so initial observations are good. This is starting to flatten out. However, I have been having a bunch of problems with this thing tripping out the circuit that it's on. So. Um, just give me a second, I'm gonna have to look into that. All right, so it is actually a couple of weeks later. Uh, kept having problems with this thing tripping out circuits. Uh, had to get the electricians in. Um, I'm not gonna provide advice on what to do from an electrical perspective, but bear in mind, this unit on an Australian uh, standard 16 amp circuit uh, was tripping out the RCDs over and over again, so um, your experience may be different to mine, but I would recommend if you are gonna get one of these, understand that when they first uh, trigger, they pull an enormous amount of current, uh, and then you need to have a circuit that will handle that. So speak to an electrician, get the right advice, and get something safe put in for you, which I have now done. So we should be ready to keep going. So let's take a look at where we're at. And you can see here that the pulls that I'd done originally have lifted the surface of the metal up and caused some peaks in some areas. This is, I think, the first one that I did, and this is definitely an over pull. Um, we now have a small mound on top of this that I didn't want to do. The rest of them have been quite good. There's a little bit of a balancing act. So these were the early ones I did through here um, and where I was trying to pull a lot more. Uh, and then the rest of them are a little bit more tame. And what I found works the best here is to actually start, rather than doing what I did, which was go for the middle of the dent and try and pull it out from where the impact would have been, is to start at the edges and pull everything up, you know, slowly and together so that 
when you're pulling this edge here, you're not really needing to lift that high, but as you do it, you also take some of the height out of this area here. So you're just incrementally going bit by bit towards the center. That's what I found is working best for me at the moment. That may change through the course of this because I'm still gonna try this bit and this bit up here uh, and we'll see whether we have any better luck. So I'm gonna keep going with this one now. Uh, as you can see, if we get really close up, you can see all the little pock marks from where the uh, actual electrode's been touching the uh, steel. And there is a lot in there. So if you imagine all of those there, of which there's probably 30 different spots, if we had to drill holes like that in there to do it, it's just not never gonna work. So I'm gonna try through the rest of this dent uh, and I'll do that quickly. And then what I'll do is show you guys what it looks like uh, raw. And then I might try and get the dolly in from behind and just flatten this out. I think that might be a lot easier with a dolly once it's lifted up. Um, and then we'll see how smooth we can get it. I'll coat it with some black again, and then we'll sand it down and we'll see. And what I'm looking for is not that the dent will be gone. We're never gonna get this to a point where um, we file finish it and stuff like that. But if I can make sure the level of body filler in here is not more than say a millimeter to two millimeters, I'm comfortable with that as a repair rather than something like this. This one down here probably needs about six mil in it. And this one down here probably needs more than a centimeter at the moment. And uh, yeah, that's not good. So I'm gonna keep going on this one and then I'll show you where we're at before I throw the dolly on it. All right, so let's see where that's at. I just wanna take these tops off so that we can get a straight edge on it. All right, so hopefully this is showing up well on camera. The dark spots here are all obviously untouched by the sandpaper. Uh, we've just taken the tops off these. Um, we got it really good through here. This is pretty good. And then down through here, there's a small amount of difference, but not a lot. Um, up here, where this big area is, I think these areas where they were originally pulled are high. Um, and we'll check that in a second with a straight edge, but I think these are too high, meaning when I'm sanding, I'm actually resting the sander on these two points and then excluding this, so it's not quite straight across the panel. So let's see if we can get this on camera with a straight edge, which might work. If we look at the top here. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but we do have a light gap on either side of the hole. Um, so what that tells me, and I see there's a quite a gap here. I mean, the panel's not perfectly straight. There is some curve in it that's supposed to be there, but just here and just there, we definitely have high points. You can see this rocks just off that point. And similarly there, we're rocking both directly over these two holes. So what I'm gonna need to do is tap these down a bit and then continue working on that. Because if I get this all flat with those high, what I'm gonna end up doing is just bowing the whole panel out consistently and I wanna flatten it out, not bow it out. So yeah, I'll see if I can get the hammer and dolly behind this. If not, I'll just have to tap it down and then pull it up slowly as well. We'll see. Oh, that's tight. All right, so now the high point has shifted out to here. Okay, so we know these aren't the problem anymore. We're just gonna raise this area out until it meets this and this, hopefully. Um, it's really not far out. This is very, very close. I just wanna point that out. There's probably only a millimeter difference. This would be fine just to bog over now, but let's see how close we can get it.
All right, so now that we've sanded just those tips off, uh, it's looking pretty good. I mean, all this sort of scarring through here, where we do have areas that are a little bit deeper, I'm not gonna waste my time trying to pull them out because that's literally sort of half a millimeter difference, if that. And if I try to sand them out, what I'm gonna do is make the metal half a mil thinner all the way through. So it's better just to build that up slightly. Now, across the whole panel, I would say we're probably about a half a millimeter low. Maybe, so we're talking about a millimeter at the bottom of these and half a mil on the high points. Um, to illustrate that and see actually how accurate I am, because I haven't done body work in a while, what I'm gonna do now is black out this panel and then I'll get a long board onto it and we'll file over it because basically on a curved panel with a straight edge, it's, it's hard to know for 100%. So um, if I take a sort of a 12 inch long board and sand it over this, we should get a better representation of this. And what I'm hoping to see is a very, uh, there'll be a large black spot here, I'd imagine, similar size to the last one, but it should only be about half a millimeter to a millimeter deep. So that's what we're looking for. If I get a black area like this, that's great. If I get a very silver area with black on either side, this is still high and we need to knock it down a bit. Right, so um, we, are, we are high here, it turns out. So this is gonna have to just be tapped down a little bit, but it's really not that much. Like you could probably spray putty this whole panel block this back until you saw this bit and you'd never see it. But I wanna try and do this as best as I can. Um, so I'm just gonna tap this down a little bit. We'll throw some more paint over it and then see what happens. I also think we might have a little bit of a low through here. But I'm not gonna to touch this until I get this a bit smoother. All right, so you can see down that line there, we're getting pretty damn close to uh, flat. So I'm just gonna let this dry up, we'll sand it off and we'll see what we're left with. And I'm hoping what we'll see here is probably just um, something that looks quite mottly. Yeah, there will be highs and lows. If it's nice and mottly and there isn't any really big black areas and really big shiny areas, that should indicate that we are pretty close in terms of where we need to be. All right, so that's kind of what I was hoping for. Um, we are probably still a little bit high here, um, but we definitely have a low through here as well. So we're not gonna go through this process over and over again, that'll be boring for you guys to watch. But what I'm gonna do is just lift this up slightly, and then I'm gonna sand this whole thing back, um, get rid of the black completely. I think that will um, definitely show just how close we are there. I mean, we are at, a millimeter or less pretty much everywhere through there. So I'm super happy with it. Uh, let's just finish that one little bit off and then we'll close it out. So this is our finished product and man, it came up really, really well. You know, you can still feel these, these dark spots here, you can feel those, but they're so, so shallow. It's not funny. I mean, you could probably just prime a fill of this and then sand it back and you'd be fine. Um, in terms of the, the overall panel, yeah, I think we're, we're pretty close to being good with this one. Um, <clears throat> as to whether the panel is actually saved or not, I don't know. That area there and that area there still need to be looked at. I mean, realistically, this is probably the only other major one. This could be fixed by fixing the rust in the guard anyway, but I will try to pull this one out. But considering how well this came out, I'm pretty confident in those. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'd say we're at least at this stage a chance for being able to repair this entire panel. I mean, you can see even the uh, body line here where I've sanded at the top and then not sanded at the bottom. So there's black paint down there, but even that is nice and straight. It hasn't really been impacted by this. So, you know, fingers crossed, maybe we're gonna get out of this one. So yeah, I'll set the camera up. I'll start with this spot, but we will circle back around when I've done as much as I can here and see where we're at. All right, 
so we've pulled a fair amount out of that. That's probably at its deepest. I would say it's about half of what it was before, but it's still really low and this is quite stretched. I mean, it's a very big dent. You knew that going in. So rather than just keep trying the same way, I'm not sure, I may end up just cutting this out and replacing it with a piece of metal, but while we've got it here, we can play around with it a bit. So what I'm gonna try next is actually a little bit of heat shrinking. So um, I'm gonna use the carbon rods, um, which looks like that, just goes into the handpiece, and we should be able to touch it on. It'll put heat into the panel, uh, which I will then cool. And obviously if you heat something up and then cool it rapidly, we should see some shrinkage just like getting out of the pool on a really cold day. So yeah, I'm gonna try and shrink in here and see if that will lift it up anymore. All right, so it's getting late in the day. Uh, let's have a look at how we went. So as you can see, this area uh, is not what I'd call a finish repair. Uh, definitely improved. This is probably only sort of three, four mil deep now in here, whereas it used to be sort of 10 to 15 millimeters. Uh, and what I was running into was a lot of sort of arcing out in here. So either the metal has been um, overworked to the point where I'm burning through it with a spot water or something, or it might be shorting out on the panel behind. Um, I'm not really 100% sure, but basically I could no longer pull this out any further. It was just popping off every time I tried. So um, yeah, certainly reached the limits there. I did also change over to the old uh, earth again. That seemed to improve things, um, but not 100%. So maybe I need the 500 amp version of this, the bigger one. Um, this also does the magnet because you're tapping against the panel all the time. It has a tendency to move down the panel and then fall off or um, move into places where it doesn't or earth properly. Uh, but yeah, we got it okay. I'm not sure, I may still cut this piece of metal out and replace it. In fact, I, I probably will. Um, but I did then move on and this area now, we've gone through to take the majority of the dent out here. So it's a little bit rough or whatever you wanna say there, but it's not bad, not bad at all. So I think that'll just need a skim. And then in here, uh, similarly, we got most of it flattened out and you can see, you know, the lines coming back in through here. There's a little divot along there. Um, the light that I've got on the side sort of highlights that a bit. So yeah, the line's all good to here. It's a little bit muddled through here, a bit low, uh, and then comes back here. But that just means we'll probably just put some, a skim of filler there as well. And then there's this bit here, which is probably the deepest area again. And that was running the same sort of experience as I was getting here. So I think there may be either a piece of metal behind this, or it was just too deep to start with. These little dents, yes, they're still in there. And what I was finding was if I tried to pull them, I was just pulling the metal up around them. These are obviously hard enough to not want to move, but they are very shallow. This one is probably only a millimeter deep. So uh, they're fine to stay. Um, and overall, the panel is looking pretty damn good. Um, you know, this is ugly and, you know, I may go through, if I manage to find a cut that was around here, maybe I'll cut it along the line and replace it all, but it doesn't need to be replaced. This is serviceable. I can make this work. So yeah, um, look, overall, I think there's a lot to learn here and uh, I'll certainly get better as I go. Um, but look, let's jump back to the workbench now and then I can talk to whether this thing is worth your money or not. All right, so how do we go? Overall, I am really happy with the progress and the outcomes that we made today. In terms of the dent puller itself, overall pretty happy, but there is a few caveats that you should know. First and foremost is that issue that I was having with the power. So don't expect this to be an easy thing just to throw on a normal circuit at home. These are more industrially geared units. Um, I don't know, I mean, mine could still potentially have a fault in the unit, which was causing my problems and we found a workaround, but um, I don't think that's the case. It's not showing any other weird behaviors. So I'd say it's just that quick initial ramp up or the curve uh, needed on the circuit. So that is something to consider. In terms of the spot welding and dent pulling, 
that was excellent. Uh, I really, really got to, I mean, you'll see in some of those images, I got the, uh, the, the points at which I was pulling to sort of a, a millimeter or two millimeter apart from each other. So it gave me an incredible amount of control. I was able to pull those panels back to flat relatively easily. It did take some time, you know, I've spent some hours just tapping away at that thing, but I think it was thoroughly worth it in the end. There is a bunch of other accessories that I haven't tried on that thing as well, which is like a waveline tool uh, and some circle tabs and a pulling claw. So there's a bunch of other stuff that I could potentially be doing with this thing later. But so far for the money I've spent, I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna keep practicing though. So I've got the other side of the car to do and the rear um, sort of beaver panel, if you will. Uh, that is going to probably require some pulling as well. So definitely going to keep working on that. Make sure you uh, like, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more of that. But in next week's episode, we're actually going to be introducing a new member of the Build Room family. We have uh, one car leaving and we have actually two cars showing up, but we'll go through one of them next week. But that just leaves us with the usual spiel, which is if you're new to the channel, make sure you watch the full Violet Crumble series, which I'll link to here. And I'll put some other A90 links and bits and pieces down here. Other than that, I just want to say thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on The Build Room. Bye for now.